Currently, we are in Jeffersonville, Indiana, right about 10 minutes away from Louisville. We are on the Kentucky-Indiana border, and right now I'm walking up to the Lankford Funeral Home here. This funeral home was all over the news for the last few days, and I was about a couple hundred miles away, so I thought I'd come down and show you guys what this funeral home looks like and talk about what happened. So apparently last week or so, somebody had a loved one who passed away and they brought them here to this funeral home to have them cremated. And this woman comes over here to this funeral home, which is that brown colored building right in front of you. And she's there to pick up her loved one's cremated remains. When she gets into this building, she notices a very overpowering stench of decomposition. If any of you out there has worked at a funeral home or have been around a dead body or even an animal that has died, you never forget the smell. It is something that stays with you for the, for the rest of your life. So she leaves and she calls the proper authorities that you would call for a situation such as this. They come over here a few days later and they get to this building and as soon as they walk inside the overpowering smell of the dead just overtakes them. Apparently the owner of the funeral home right here had 16 cremated remains that he was holding on to and I believe it was 31 bodies. Now, over the last few days, you had a refrigerated truck and you had men in uh, hazmat uniforms removing all the 31 bodies that were in different stages of decomposition. And nobody here right now and as you can see, looking at these doors, they are boarded up and they are nailed shut. You can see right here, this is a fly trap to trap all the flies in this area. And you can see right here, this board, this, was, this would have been used to transport the bodies. You can see there's, I don't wanna to get too close, but there's dry blood right there all right there yikes and you can see right here you see these stains well oh my god i can smell it oh geez oh my oh my god oh my god i want to throw up right now <coughs> oh my whoa oh lord oh my god i can smell it from right here jeez that smells just like when I worked at the coroner's office in Los Angeles. Whoa, I can't believe that this lady was even able to step inside. Boy, if you guys could smell what I smelled right now, half of you would probably vomit. Oh boy, I just had flashbacks when I was 18 years old, wow. Anyways. So all of the bodies here are gone. Uh, and you can see, as I was showing you before, all of the uh, bodies that were dripping the bodily fluids is easily seen right there. You can see all the stays right there. And I will not be uh, smelling through my nose uh, for the rest of the time I'm here. And you can see right here at this trash can i'm just looking to see what kind of stuff that was thrown outside of course you got caution tape right here oh boy i don't think there's going to be any medical waste in there but i just don't want to get too close okay yeah you got some rubber gloves uh, you got some just water bottles stuff like that uh, i'm i'm pretty sure there's some kind of contamination right here 
Uh, you're probably going to hear some fireworks, firecrackers. The 4th of July is tomorrow as the recording of this video. I'm going to explain to you guys really quickly about how some funeral homes work. Uh, my friend used to be a mortician and she worked at a funeral home. So many of you out there are probably asking yourselves, how could this have possibly happened? How do you have uh, over 30 uh, people's uh, loved ones' bodies inside there just being kept uh, to uh, hold on to and why are, were they not buried? Why were they not uh, uh, given a respectful uh, funeral or what have you? Here's the problem. When you bring your loved one to a funeral home such as this right here, a lot of people don't have the money for a funeral. The average cost of a funeral nowadays is about $10,000. And my friend went on the funeral home's website and noticed how many young people that were on there. And she's dealt with this industry for many years. Typically, when people are young and they die, they tend to die from either their own hand or drug overdoses. So if you got a kid who's 25, 30 years old and he died of a drug overdose, it's a good chance that his family just does not have the money for the funeral. Sometimes they charge a deposit, sometimes they don't. So if you work for this funeral home and I call you and I say, hey, my cousin died uh they'll you know ask you a couple different questions they'll say okay how old is he uh what race was he uh, how much does he weigh so forth and so on then they come they pick up the bodies and then they bring them here and then hopefully you pay for the funeral you pay for the embalming you pay for the, uh, picking up the body uh bringing it here or you pay for the funeral all that stuff but if i call you and you just say i don't know i don't i don't have any money then what they do is they hang on to the bodies and they they basically just wait for you to uh, pay them for the services rendered. They're just basically waiting for either like half the deposit or, you know, whatever you could afford. You know, a lot of people are hurting right now. And if you don't pay them, they have to, you know, each state and county is different. If you don't uh, pay them, you have to just keep them. That's why these places have refrigerators. But how many bodies and how many months were they keeping them here and not being paid for their services? That is, in effect, how you have 31 corpses that were in this building because more than likely, those were the deceased, uh, uh, de deceased uh, people and their families, they just couldn't afford to pay for them to be properly, you know, cared for in their, you know, after they died. And they just held on to them. And that basically was it in a nutshell. Um, I don't know if how much fault is at the hand of the owner of this funeral home, but in a sense, it's fair to ask is it really their fault that you had 31 people that did not in a sense pay for uh you know services rendered me right now i'm gonna guess i'm about 25 feet away from the door and i can smell it right now uh, that is how powerful the uh, stench is just from right here i could still smell it and i guess the county is going to get down to the bottom of this you know we are in an area there's a lot of drugs unfortunately in this area and a lot of young people uh more than likely dying from like i said earlier drug overdoses and who's to blame i have no idea but anyways okay guys i am out of here I have to uh, try to get that smell out of my nose because, boy, let me tell you, if you, yeah, you wouldn't want to smell what I just smelled. Terrible, terrible. And, you know, I feel badly for the uh, people whose loved ones died and were brought here, but what are you going to do? You know what I mean? If you, you know, if your son dies, your, your, your uncle dies, and they come and pick them up and you don't have the money for the funeral and you know they'll say to you hey okay well if you sign off we'll just cremate them well 
some people, they didn't even pay for the cremation. And it costs a lot of money for places like this to cremate these bodies. A lot of times, these funeral homes, they don't even have a crematory. Uh, they'll use like an outside service. For instance, uh, that building right there, that could be, you know, Jack's crematory. So they would have a contract with them to just, you know, say, uh, you know, we'll pay $300, a, you know, per body that you cremate. And then they pass on the cost to you. So you, you might pay them, you know, $1,300 for uh, a cremation. And then they might just give these guys so much business that they get a discounted price. Could be more, could be three, maybe four or $500. But that gas bill to operate those ovens are very, very high. And in all likelihood, uh, this place probably just didn't have the money to cremate all those bodies or maybe they were not able to get a hold of the family members so i really can't assess who's to blame in this situation but <sighs> anyways uh, rest in peace to all those uh you know that were here and uh just a very uh, terrible story okay guys lamont at large i will catch up with you later i'm hitting the road peace out